Hello and welcome. I'm just doing this very short video because I just want to show you some of the things that you need to have in your workroom. So one of the first things that you're going to need throughout this journey is a set of scales, fine jewellery scales. Please don't buy the Chinese ones. I like this brand, it's called Tanita. It's a Japanese brand, they're very, very accurate and because it's going to be so important because they need to be sensitive enough to be able to record and to be able to, um, what's the word, uh, to detect a single drop of oil and I've bought some Chinese brands in the past and they're fine for I don't know if you want to measure jewelry um, and larger heavier amounts but a single drop of oil they just weren't registering and I realized this when I bought six of them and had them in one of my perfume classes and everybody was so disappointed so please don't be disappointed um, by these scales they go up to 200 grams and it's very important that you have um, a decimal point on them of two so what you'll do is it will say, you can't see it on here because it actually has to be on a flat surface for you to be able to read it. So if you try to weigh your scales holding it, it won't work. So these, this brand Tanita is very good. So this is one of the things that you need in your arsenal because I'm teaching you perfumery the proper way, not using drops and not using parts, using grams. And especially if you want to go into the perfume industry, it's very important that you know that. I don't want to teach you another way and then you're going to have to learn a whole new method after that as well. You're going to need one of these to put your fragrance strips in. You can either have something like this, they got little slots at the top, it's like a paper blotter holder, or if you prefer, you can have something like this. I got this from Daiso, it was seven dirhams, which is a couple of dollars, and you can actually hold your clamps in this if you prefer. You need pipettes. These are plastic pipettes. These hold three mils. Glass ones will not suffice. I've seen people on YouTube making perfumes with glass ones and then washing it with alcohol. Don't do that ever, please. You must use plastic ones and then you can throw them away. When I talk about throwing away, here's another thing you need, a bin. You don't need a great big waste bin. Get one of these. I got this from Ikea and it's to hold like little tiny plants, but I use it as a bin. So that way, and have it over there away from your clean stuff so that you know because trust me if you have a bin right next to it you'll get confused as to what's clean and to what's dirty and that's why it needs to be a different receptacle than what you actually put them in and if you like me and you like fancy things you can put your stuff in these absolutely gorgeous vintage jugs so I've got my little strips here I've got paper strips here and I actually um, cut up the paper strips from glueless uh, sketch pad and it has quite a thick GSM, so have a look and see if you can see it in, in any art shops or stationers. You can have some little toothpicks. Here's another little vintage jug, don't you love this? So um, you can use little toothpicks because these are quite handy for when you want to smell oils using your test tubes. Coming to test tubes, try and get yourself a rack like this. Normally medical suppliers will actually have them. So you can ask around and then you want to look at test tubes. These are actually acrylic. Um, I use acrylic ones at the moment just for the sake of the experimenting, but you're better with glass ones because they'll actually spoil and they'll start to crack and the essential oils that you're using. So acrylic ones are not ideal for you, but I'm quite clumsy, so I keep breaking the glass ones, so I'm using acrylics just to show you. And then I've got this gorgeous little thing to put all my test tubes in, but you can use whatever you want. But I just love using fun and fancy little things to store my things in. It just makes the whole fragrant journey a little bit more fun. And then, of course, you're going to need some ethanol alcohol. Uh, you can use the perfumer's alcohol, but it's not recommended. And I spoke to a chemist uh, once in the UK, and um, you're not allowed to use perfumer's alcohol when it comes to creating uh, fragrances and getting them tested by chemists, etc. Um, and it's been denatured. So what you need to look for is ethanol alcohol and you can either use the absolute alcohol or 96 percent but make sure it's ethanol alcohol there are other kinds of alcohols out there rubbing alcohol will not do vodka will not do you need to get yourself a little measuring jug like this you don't need to use the actual measures on it so if you don't then it doesn't really matter because we're going to be weighing remember and then you need to have some beautiful stickers so don't forget to get yourself some stickers because you're going to be writing and recording things and that's where this comes in, a beautiful pen that I actually got from the Virgil Arrow. 
and a calculator, this is going to come in handy. Don't use your phone because I don't want you to have your phone in your workroom because you need to be able to concentrate. And I've got this little foot phone that I found at also at Dyson. Coffee beans, these are a really good thing to have in your workroom because it helps to refresh the palate. Now other people say you shouldn't really use coffee beans because it's just another smell and you're just adding to, you know, your aroma and um, the overpowering, you know, your palate. So what you can do, and I hope if you have clean skin, don't wear perfume while you're working, that's another point as well. And you can smell your skin in between if your nose starts to get fatigued or if you have some pure wool, just put some of that to your nose. And talking about refreshing your palate, it's very important not to work continuously for hours and hours and hours. At least once an hour, give yourself a break of about 15 minutes, go away, get some fresh air, go and have a cup of coffee or some sparkling water or something like that. Uh, yeah, so those are the scales. Uh, what else do we have here? We're going to need some bottles. Now what you can store, and I recommend, is dark glass bottles. I don't actually use them. There's several reasons why I don't use them. But a lot of people like them because they have this plunger. Now, you can buy dark glass bottles and you can buy them without the plunger. You don't need the plunger because you're using this. And I think what tends to happen is that when you draw up the liquid from the plunger, it's going into here and the rubber, do you know what? It's actually contaminating the smell. So it's not, and then a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put the plunger down and it's damaging your table. You're getting drops of things everywhere. And then you have to use your pipette to do things and to smell strips. Do you know what I mean? You get the drift right. This is just like a, it's a pain. I don't like them. So I use these bottles. And yes, I know, oh, I shouldn't be using clear glass. They do spoil more quickly. And if you look at my perfumer's organ over here, now it's not a traditional perfumer's organ. You can do whatever you like with your perfumer's organ. I just have these shelves from Ace Hardware, industrial type shelves. I have these little palettes that my husband made for me so lovingly so that they fit all my bottles in so that they don't fall over. Because that's the problem. If you buy something that's quite tall and thin, it has a tendency to fall over like so. So you need to be careful. But the reason that I like these bottles is because they have lids. So if you can buy dark glass bottles with lids without pipettes, then that's great. But one tip, when you're labelling your bottle, what's in it, that's fabulous, you're going to have to do that, but put a sticker on the lid as well, because you might have several bottles open at the same time, and then when you go back, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know, oh, I can't tell what oil that is, and you're not, be able to, you're not going to be able to tell what lid the bottle has come from, so a top tip from Melanie Jane there. Okay, so I like those bottles, that's great. What else? Gloves. When we're working with neat oils, we need to wear gloves. When you're working with the diluted ones, it's not so important because they're at skin-friendly ratios. Uh, I have some tissues under my desk as well, just in case there's any spillages. And I also have some sellotape. And the sellotape is actually to just waterproof the stickers. Because once a sticker you've written on it and it gets a little bit wet, unless you've got like a label maker that makes waterproof stickers, then that's fabulous. But yeah, if you write on a sticker and then you put it on a bottle and then you put sellotape over it, it's waterproofing it. Because if that label gets wet, it's going to run all the ink and you're not going to know what's in it. But by the end of the course you will because you'll be able to identify every single oil that you're going to use. We're going to be looking at around 60 oils throughout the course. And I don't know, can you think of anything that I've missed that I need in my workroom? Oh yes, you need the neat essential oil. So I have mine very handily here and I have um, vanilla. Mm, and these are all neat oils and these are what I'm going to be using you and showing you how to dilute your oils in one of the videos coming up in module one. So I've got grapefruit here, I've got cypress, I'm just randomly picking up neat oils. So this is my perfumer's organ and I have it all so it's here and it's handy. And how I've done it, and it depends, it's up to you. I'll show you something a little bit later in another video where my husband made me some little steps. 
and it looks like a bit like a wedding cake actually, like tears, and um, that's from my perfumer's organ. But it's not ideal because of the bottles that I have, you know, they're very tall and very thin, but you can have something if you have something that's more squat. They won't fall over as much, and this kind of glass is heavier than that one. So what you can do, what I've done here, is I only have two shelves to work with, because it depends, your space might be limited in your workroom, as is mine. This is my workroom in my home. This is where I come to play, and this is where I come to experiment and do little videos. I have another one that's more clinical, and it's more in the actual production facility where I create perfumes. Uh, for other people but this is just where I come because it's nice to be able to come home and just go into a room where I want to create a perfume or do some experimenting when I get some inspiration. So this is just two shelves and I have around a hundred oils here and what I've done is I have all my heart notes here actually I have all my florals here I don't know what Clarice Age is doing there if I have all my florals. See, you need to be organised. So these are all my florals. Florals is one of the biggest groups of families that we're going to be getting to. But this is one of the biggest groups. So I have one shelf dedicated to florals and I try to put them in alphabetical order, sort of. So we do that A through to uh, Y for Lang Ylang. And then at the bottom here, what I have is I have citruses and I have fruits, then I have spices, then I have greens and aromatics, and then woods and resins and balsams at the back there. So as you can see, it's going down into the notes and into the family. So it's quite easy for me to be able to get them because you don't want to be rummaging around and spending hours to try and get, try and find an oil and then you get really frustrated. And as you can see here on these labels, here's some beautiful oak moss and it's got a label on the front and I've put a label on the lid as well. And on the label I've actually put to remind myself, just in case I forget, the oak moss and it's in the green family. It's actually verging on the wood as well. Or we have cedar wood and I've put here that it's a base note and it's in the wood family. So you can do that on your labels or you can just simply... <laughs> Get one of these and write cedar wood on it and have a look at your um, little notes and families list to refer to anything that you want. Anyway, I think I have rabbited on enough. I don't think I've missed anything out what I should have in here apart from wonderful books that I picked this up. This is a magical book. This is about the Narcissus in France and I'm actually going to Albrecht in May to go and have a look at the Narcissus fields there. So it's nice to have some inspiring things around you, some little um, framed quotes like this one, smell is a potent wizard that transports us across thousands of miles and all the years that you have lived. So it's nice to have little quotes and things. Make it an inspirational room. You know, I put little scarves, I have perfume books, I have feathers, I have funny little things like this that says drama queen and I have this gorgeous little cupboard where I actually have vintage perfumes. So I have this very very old um, Cristal perfume, I bought this in a vintage shop in Paris and it's absolutely divine even though it's like probably 70 years old and then I have a newer little Chanel bottle. But this is where I actually keep my pipettes and my strips and all of these things so that they don't go dusty, you know, there's always lots of dust in the air. And I put them in this cupboard so that I can close the door. One really good tip, in your workroom, make sure that it's free from smells. Don't wear perfume, don't even wear deodorant or body lotion or anything like that when you're working with fragrance because it will confuse your nose. Don't have any room sprays or anything like that and make sure that your room is completely free from smells. Okay, so that's enough. I think I have um, shown you everything that you need at the moment in your workroom, apart from obviously your downloadable workbooks that I hope you're gonna download and have them perhaps printed out while you're watching the videos and going through the presentations. So I'll see you in lesson one in module one. Take care.